Hey Canucks fans, what are some of your most memorable in-goal moments that you've been able to witness live? I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram, I'm the founder of the GLCBC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club, and this is my Canucks Take all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks Commentary for Sunday, March the 29th. Before I start, I want to invite you to my YouTube live stream tonight at 10 p.m. on YouTube, obviously. I do these twice a week, so it's semi-weekly, not bi-weekly. Sunday night and Wednesday night usually, but Sunday night is my home base. It's the night that started it all off, so I hope you join me. We'll talk Canucks, we'll talk about NHL, we'll talk about Bo Horvat appearing on that conference call with the rest of the Pacific Division captains. We'll talk about COVID-19. We'll talk about how bad I am at NHL 20 on the PS4. Whatever you want to talk about, I hope you join me tonight, 10 p.m. on YouTube. Okay, today's uh, video was inspired by the fact that Sportsnet played the epic Vancouver, Chicago, Game 7, April 2011, Alex Burrow slaying the dragon. They played that game on replay last night. It was weird how they showed the Versus feed, though, the US feed, not the Sportsnet or CBC feed. Maybe it was a rights issue. Who knows? But we still got to see the game that we have come to know, love, and that's forever etched in our memory. And I was blessed to be at that game. You know, you guys know I'm a season ticket member. I've been so for the past nine seasons. In fact, my first season was the 2010-2011 season. Perfect season to start going to these games on a more frequent basis. So yes, I get it. I'm blessed to be a season ticket member. I'm lucky to go, fortunate to go to the, all these games. And um, so this isn't supposed to be some sort of weird flex or anything like that. I'm mean, just, just sharing with you. Uh, in, in my past 10 years in the arena, these are my top five games that I've, that I've witnessed, the top five moments that I've witnessed in-game, being blessed to witness live. I put this out on Twitter yesterday. got a lot of really good feedback. Some people agreeing with a lot of mine. Some saying, hey, what about this one? Or I got to see this one. And those are all really cool to read. So I hope you do the same as well in this video. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you think about the five moments that I've listed, what you remember about those five moments. And more importantly, give me your top three, your top top five, whatever you've been blessed to witness live at the arena, tell me your top moments and I'd love to, I'd love to read about those down below. Okay, so here we go in order one to five. Number one was definitely Alex Burrell's slaying the dragon uh, to defeat the Chicago Blackhawks. Now, you guys remember, and I've vlogged about this a lot before, Alex Burrell's had a crazy game. He opened the scoring just a few minutes in, then he was the one, he missed a penalty shot in the third that could have sealed the game, perhaps. Then he was the one in the penalty box when Patrick Sharp almost won the game for the Canucks in overtime, actually, uh, for the Blackhawks in overtime. Actually, even before that, Alex Burrell, you could argue, was the GOAT on Jonathan Taves' game tying goal with two minutes left, as he was the one who gave the puck away and did not, in the neutral zone, and did not check Taves. So Burrell's was all over the place. He scored the goal, the opening goal. He then missed a penalty shot. Then he was maybe uh, responsible for Chicago's goal. Then he was almost responsible for, for a Chicago win by being in the penalty box. And then, of course, he scores the game-winning goal, the most memorable goal in Canucks history. Now, the one thing I will, the reason why that was so memorable, aside from seeing the celebration and being so happy because of the circumstances, the Blackhawks beat the Canucks the pre previous two playoffs, eliminated them from playoff contention. But even this season, the Canucks won the first three, Chicago won the next three, and Chicago seemed to have all the momentum heading into Rogers Arena for that memorable Game 7. Now, the one thing I, I talk about a lot, but it's so true, between the time that Jonathan Taves scored and then a minute and a half left in regulation and then the 17-minute uh, intermission before overtime, my season ticket partner, Mike, and I, we barely said a word to each other. We were so nervous. We were so scared. And we, we were witnessing a collapse, perhaps, in front of us. And I think the other 18,000 fans and tenants had a similar feeling because there was a weird buzz in the arena. It wasn't a buzz like rah, rah, rah. Excited. It was a, like a almost a... A very nervous, not calm. What's the opposite of calm? Nervous, weird, scared, fearful buzz. That's the best I can say it. And of course, uh, it ended up being with a happy ending. So that was my number one moment that I've been able to witness live was Alex Burrell slaying the dragon. Number two, same playoff run, just about a month later. It was Kevin BX's stanchion assisted goal. This was game five, double overtime. The Canucks defeat the San Jose Sharks to punch their ticket into the Stanley Cup Finals. We remember Alex Edler on the right point tries to put the puck down the, down the boards to, to the corner, but it bounces off a stanchion right to the middle. Meanwhile, all nine skaters and Miami are looking over to the left to see where the puck is gonna go in the corner. And BX is the only one that sees it drop in front of him and he just slaps it as hard as he can, as quickly as he can, and gets it by Niemi. Of course, uh, Euphoria erupts. The Canucks are off to the Stanley Cup Finals. And that was a really, really exciting goal to see as well because you, then you get all the confetti and, and it was, um, I say there was more pomp and circumstance to that goal than over the Burroughs goal. 
but it's still the Burroughs goal was, a, was even more of a relief almost. Although this, this is a very close second, this uh, Bieksa Stanchion goal, because of what it meant to the, for the Canucks. It meant that they're going to the Stanley Cup Finals. And um, yeah, and it, just because it's such a fluky goal, that's why it's been so memorable. So that's my number two, is Kevin Bieksa Stanchion assisted goal. My number three in-game moment, in-person moment, was when Daniel Sedin scored in overtime in the, the Sedin's final home game. So this was like the second last game of the 2017-2018 season because they had one more game after this to play in Edmonton. And to the Oilers' credit, they did a nice, uh, more subdued, but a nice salute to the send-off to the Sedin's. But we know it was overtime. It was a power play in overtime. So it was Horvat with Edler and the Sedins. And they held the puck for about a minute and 20 seconds. I don't, uh, uh, Arizona didn't touch the puck. It was Ekman Larson. It was Richardson. It was one other guy. And, and Horvat didn't touch the puck actually after he won the faceoff. Uh, he kind of jokes about it. He just skated to the front of the net and played decoy. And it was Daniel, it was Henrik and Alex Edler all, all uh, passing the puck, taking shots, retrieving rebounds, whatever it may be. And then Daniel puts it into the net. I believe it was at 2.33 of the overtime period. So obviously a bunch of twos, a bunch of threes, giving us Daniel, a bunch of Henrik, that's made it even more cool. But that was so exciting. And I, I posted a video of my live reaction. I was there with my son, Sean, and one of us was wailing. I don't know who, but you hear one guy go, oh, I'm, I'm claiming it was him. It might've been me, but it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm man enough to admit that I can cry once in a while. So um, that was my third most memorable moment. Daniel Sedin scoring in overtime for the, um, the final Sedin's home game. And you guys might remember, Prior to that game, my son and I were, were blessed to be in the tunnel, fist bumping all the players, including the Sedins, as they made their way on the ice. We, uh, my, you know, my season ticket rep has connected me with that, um, set me up with that, so I was very blessed about that. And in essence, um, I, I put that video up on YouTube as well. It's kind of embarrassing because I got so excited and, and my hand was shaking and, and you can't even see, I, actually, my, 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 I think my hand sunk a bit, so all you see is the guy's chest and then about, 15 seconds and I realized that I'm filming everyone's uh, logo and not their face. So I figured it out, but hey, I was pretty excited to fist bump Henrik and Daniel in their final game at Rogers Arena. So that's number three. Number four was actually game one of the Stanley Cup final. So here's my third entry from the 2011 playoff run. It was game one. It was 0-0, scoreless game until 19 seconds remaining. And that was Rafi Torres scoring on, it was a two on one and he puts the pa uh, puck past Tim Thomas. And then it was such a tight, stressful, intense game. And there we go. We're now we're only three games away, three wins away from winning the Stanley Cup. And I remember the place went wild uh, because now we're one game up on the Boston Bruins in, in the Stanley Cup finals. And for, for the goal to be scored 19 with 19 seconds left, it was in essence like an overtime goal like the other three uh, that I've talked about today. So, um, of course, the, the Canucks fans were jubilant, were excited. Game one in the bag, only have to win three of the next six. We know how that turned out. But that was still a very exciting goal. Actually, I didn't go to game two. I was at a church event. Um, so if I was at game two, that probably would have made my list too. And that was when Alex Burroughs scored um, basically 10 seconds into overtime, 10 or 15 seconds into overtime, going around Zidane Achara and Tim Thomas. But that would be an honorable mention if I was at that game, but I wasn't at that game. So we're going to go with Rafi Torres scoring 19 sec seconds remaining in the first in the third period in regulation to send the Canucks up 1-0 on Boston. And then my fifth most memorable in-game uh, moment um, in, in, in person was Henrik Sedin getting his 1,000th point against the Florida Panthers. So this was a few seasons ago, and fittingly, Roberto Luongo was in the net. Henrik actually scored the first Canucks goal of the game. The Canucks ended up winning that game 2-1, so it was nice that the Canucks uh, won the game. But Henrik uh, was in alone on Luongo. I'm not sure if Luongo let him score, I'm not sure if Luongo has ever said that he let him score, but he didn't seem to give the best effort. And Henrik puts the puck in past Luongo, and they give each other a quick, you know, um, helmet tap. And then Henrik Sedin becomes, you know, uh, a, a member of the 1,000-point club for the Vancouver Canucks. Pretty, pretty exciting. Daniel was able to do it a few games later because, you know, they're basically their careers mirror each other. But it was wonderful to see that, to see that celebration, to see all the Canucks pour off the bench to celebrate with Henrik. Um, you know, not as crazy as, say, all those overtime goals that I just talked about, but still a very wonderful moment, a very histor historic moment as, as Henrik breaks the 1,000-point barrier. And, um, you know, it's something that um, I don't think a lot of Canucks, well, maybe Pedersen, but not a, a lot of Canucks are going to do in the future. So that was a wonderful uh, moment to be a part of. I've heard some other honorable mentions, uh, you know, 82 playoff run, 94 playoff run. I wasn't um, going to the games back then. Those would have counted. Um, some are saying that the, the retirement game for the Sedins 
Um, and yeah, that before the game, that was fine. And during the game, maybe maybe it was Jacob Marston's wonderful performance to, to beat Chicago. So there's been a lot of honorable mentions, other playoff wins, other playoff moments. But those are my five. Alex Burrow slaying the dragon. Kevin BX is scoring off the stanchion, assist to the stanchion. Uh, Daniel Sedin's goal in the Sedin's last home game, you know, their careers. Rafi Torres sealing game one of the Stanley Cup Finals. And then Henrik Sedin scoring on Luongo to record his 1,000th NHL point. So there we go. Let me know. Tell me if you agree with those, what you remember about any of those, or tell me some of your favorite moments that you've been blessed to witness live. We'd love to read about them and get, keep the conversation going. Subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you like to. Make sure you join me tonight at 10 p.m. on YouTube for my weekly live stream, my semi-weekly live stream. And of course, take care of yourselves and of one another. Be safe, be healthy, God bless, and go Canesco.